Good morning, uh, everybody. I'm Raymond van Holder. I'm a retired professor from Ghent University, and I'm also working for European Kidney Health Alliance. That's a Brussels-based NGO that is defending the case of kidney patients and of the kidney community at the level of the European Union in Brussels. Uh, my presentation is about the relationship of uremic toxins and uh, dialysis membranes. Uh, before my retirement, I have been working extensively in the area of uh, uremic toxicity and also in uh, dialysis removal. And I have uh, continued that work more from the uh, philosophical or theoretical side after my retirement. Uh, the presentation will explain how uremic toxins uh, relate to dialysis membranes. I will start from an old classification that now has been made more granular due to the fact that novel dialysis techniques and membranes allow the removal of larger molecules uh, than before. But then I will also explain a potential glitch um, a hypothesis, uh, namely that uh, uremic toxin metabolism not only produces noxious compounds, but also beneficial compounds, and that there is a potential disadvantage of uh, dialysis, that it would remove both beneficial and noxious compounds. And to compensate for this, we must think uh, about additional uh, strategies to uh, return uh, this uh, equilibrium between noxious and beneficial compounds. For instance, by the administration of xenobiotics, probiotics, prebiotics, metabiotics, symbiotics, or by the preservation of residual kidney function, or by the use of regenerative medicine, the addition of living cells or stem cells to the dialysis membrane.